In this subunit, we're going to talk about the issue of metabolic scaling in biology. And in particular, one theory uh, that has made a lot of waves recently in the complex systems community and throughout biology. Let's first start with some definitions. The metabolic rate of an organism is the amount of energy that organism expends per unit time. You probably know that all of your cells are at all times undergoing metabolic reactions in which food is turned into energy and the metabolic rate of an organism can be measured by the amount of heat that it emits per unit time. Now it's been known for a long time that metabolic rate scales with body mass but there's been some controversy about exactly what the scaling law is. The theories of metabolic scaling are a bit complicated and involve a little bit of math, so I'll go through it very slowly, step by step, and hopefully it won't be too complicated. So first, there are some assumptions that were made. Well, we know that the body's made of cells. Metabolic reactions, as I said, are constantly taking place. And as a simplifying assumption, scientists sometimes approximate body mass by assuming that the body is a sphere of cells with radius r. So here's our little hamster who we're going to assume is the sphere of cells and here's the radius r. So we're going to use some geometric arguments. Now let's look at a variety of sizes of organisms. So let's start out with our little mouse. Let's say it has radius r. Geometrically, we know that the surface area of this sphere is proportional to r squared, and the volume is proportional to r cubed. So that's similar to the arguments that I was making earlier about the bedroom scaling. Now suppose we have a hamster. Let's assume that the radius of the hamster is twice the radius of the mouse. That would mean that the surface area of the hamster, or this sphere, would be proportional to the square of the radius, that is, so 2r quantity squared, which is 4 times r squared, okay, where r is the mouse's radius, and the volume would be the radius cubed, or 8 times r cubed. Now let's look at a hippo, much bigger. Let's assume that its radius is 50 times the radius of the mouse, which means that its surface area would be 50 squared times r squared, that's 2500 r squared, and its volume would be 50 cubed times r cubed, which is 125,000 times r cubed, so it's getting pretty big. We're also going to assume that the mass of the organism is proportional to the volume of the sphere. That's a reasonable assumption. So our simplest hypothesis might be that metabolic rate which is the amount of energy or heat given off by the organism, scales with body mass directly, that it's directly proportional to body mass, where body mass is proportional to volume. Okay, well, there's a problem. The problem is that while the mass is proportional to the volume, heat can only radiate from the surface. Well, what does that mean? That means that the amount of heat is proportional to the volume, a huge number, but that heat can only radiate over a much smaller number, the surface area. In our hippo, we have 125,000 times the heat of the mouse, that is proportional to the volume, radiating over an area that's only 2,500 times the surface area of a mouse. So a huge amount of heat radiating over a relatively smaller area can produce only a very hot hippo, a hippo that's burning up. Well, fortunately for hippos and the rest of us, evolution did not make metabolic rate scale directly with body mass, so that hypothesis is wrong. Well, we can argue geometrically that surface area is proportional to volume raised to the two-thirds power that's because the surface area we know is proportional to r squared and we can actually write r squared as r cubed to the two-thirds. Threes cancel out and we are left with r squared. 
but r cubed is proportional to the volume so the surface area is proportional to the volume raised to the two-thirds power so what you might expect is a second hypothesis being true that metabolic rate scales with body mass to the two-thirds power that is it doesn't scale with body mass directly it scales with a smaller number that is the surface area that's called the surface hypothesis and it was believed for many years it seems reasonable to assume that we'd like metabolism to produce as much energy as possible which means that it would radiate heat proportional to the surface area of the organism okay so here's some data and this is a log log plot where body mass is plotted here and metabolic rate is plotted here and you can see these different organisms fall pretty well on a straight line and if you measure the slope of this line it is not two-thirds but rather it is three-fourths unexpectedly while the geometric argument would argue for this exponent being two-thirds the actual data shows that it's three-fourths this is called Kleiber's law after the person who discovered it and for 60 years nobody really understood why metabolic rate would scale with body mass to the three-fourths at this point let's stop and have a brief quiz to make sure you understand what we've done so far